this video, we will learn how to configure an SQLite database, perform save, display, edit, and delete operations in a Flutter app. To install the SQLite Flutter package, visit the pub.dev website. Copy the dependency SQLite and include it in the project's pubspec.yaml file. Then click on pubget. I have started a new project and I'm currently working on it. Create a Dart file and name it Database Helper. Import two packages, SQLite and Path. The Path package is used to generate the database path. Create a class called Database Helper. Create two functions, one to open the database and another to create the table. The Open Database function should return a database object. Use the getDatabasesPath function to retrieve the path to the directory where databases are stored on the device. It returns a future that completes with the database path. Use the join function from the path package to concatenate the obtained database path with the file name mydatabase.db. Set the path variable to the complete path of the database file. Call the OpenDatabase function with the previously determined path specifying the version number as 1 and providing an onCreate callback named createDatabase. It returns a future that completes with a database object. If the database does not exist, the createDatabase function will be invoked to create the necessary database structure. Create the createDatabase function, which is used as a callback function when creating a database. Use the execute method on the db object, an instance of the database class, to execute a SQL statement. The SQL statement creates a table named users with three columns, ID as an auto-incrementing integer primary key, name as a text column, and age as an integer column. The create table if not exists statement ensures that the table is only created if it doesn't already exist. Let's create a function for inserting data. Call the open database method to obtain a reference to the database. Wait for the completion of open database, since it returns a future database. The db variable will hold the reference to the open database. Create a, a map object named data that represents the user data to be inserted into the database. It contains two key value pairs, name and age. Pass the name and age parameters to the method. Call the insert method on the db object an instance of the database class, to insert the data map into the user's table. It returns a future int representing the number of affected rows, id of the inserted row or minus 1 if an error occurred. Open main.dart and import database helper.dart. Declare two controller variables for the name and age text fields that we are going to create. Create a method for saving data. Retrieve values from the name and text fields. Call the insert user method from the database helper class, passing the name and age variables as arguments. Print the value of insert ID to the console. Dispose of the two controllers. In the body, create two text form fields and an elevated button. The text fields are for name and age data. The elevated button is for saving. Assign the controllers here. Call the save data function on the on press of the save button. Run the app. Data has been saved. 3 is returned. This is the third row. I had previously inserted two data for testing. Now, let's display the saved data. Open the database helper file and create the following function, open database. This function executes a query on the user's table using the query method provided by the database class. It retrieves all the rows from the user's table and returns them as a list of maps, where each map represents a row with column names as keys and corresponding values. Open the main.dart file. Create the following function, getData. The method body calls the getData method from the database helper class. 
It awaits the result of this method call using await and returns the fetched user data. Turn this into a void function since there's no need to return anything. Declare a list variable and assign the fetched data to it. Declare the list variable globally. Assign the variable by using setState. Display the data using this global variable. Call the fetchUser function inside the initState method. Display it after this column. Therefore, it can be wrapped with another column. Create a sized box with height 30. Add an expanded widget. Then a list view builder. The item count is datalist.length. Create an item builder function. Pass two parameters, build context and index. The item builder returns a list tile. The title displays the name field. The index is the row index. Display the age in the subtitle. Run the app. Data is displayed. After entering the next value, it wasn't displayed. The display only updates after a refresh. Let's fix that problem. After the insert, call the getData function. After that, update the value. Set the controller value to null. Now, let's save data. It has been refreshed.
Now, let's implement the delete function. Add a delete icon button for that. In the database helper class, open the file and create a function called delete data. The parameter is the ID to delete. Use the db.delete method to delete it. Open main.dart. Create a delete function that calls the delete data method from the database helper class. Call the get data method to get the latest data from the database after the delete. Call that function in the delete icon button. Pass the ID parameter. Run the app. Delete functionality is working. Now, let's add an edit button and implement edit functions. Add an edit button by wrapping the icon button with a row. Use mainaxissize.min. Create an icon button with an edit icon. Create a new Dart file for the edit page. Name it updateuser.dart. Import material.dart and databasehelper.dart. Create a stateful widget called updateuser. Create two text editing controller objects for the name and age text fields. Return a scaffold and create a title. Create text fields and an elevated button for updating data. Wrap the column with a padding. Open main.dart. Navigate to the update user page using the navigator.push method. Navigate it to the new page. Now, we need to display that particular data here. So, pass the ID as a parameter. Open update user.dart and create a user ID variable. Add it to the constructor to receive the user ID. Open the database helper.dart file. Create a function to retrieve a single record using the ID. This function returns that single record. Open update user.dart. Create a fetch data function. Call the get single data method from the database helper class and assign the data to the text fields. Call the fetch data function in the init state method. Dispose of all controllers.
values are displayed in the edit page. Write an update function in the database helper class. This is the update function. And create a function to update. Call the update data function from the database helper class. The navigator.pop function is used to return after insertion. The parameters are build context and a Boolean value true. It is used to refresh the value after updating the main page. Check if the result is true in the main.dart file when opened in a material page root. Dot then result. If the result is true, call a function named fetchData. Let's write the fetchData function. I have done what we did earlier by putting it into a function. Call the update data function in the update button. Pass the context parameter. Run the app. Change the name and age. Yes, it is updated. Thank you for watching.